Just doing a little bit of templating here in Twin Motion, and wanted to give a little preview of things to come maybe in part 10 here. Uh, there's just nothing I like better than a well oiled workflow. And that is to say, I like it when Twin Motion is doing exactly what I want it to, um, and things are organized exactly the way I want them. So nice to be able to pick various items from my user added library items and decorate something like a bedroom quite quickly using these items. Uh, it's just uh, really, really a nice system when you get it set up correctly. So part 10, we're gonna be doing some templating. We're gonna be doing some user added library items, tricks for getting these into your, your scene, and also some lighting tricks, a few other things, uh, maybe focus a little bit more on interior decor. So that's coming in part 10. Please stay tuned, part nine starting right now. This is Renee Rabbit of Rabbit Design, and I think I've done it. I think I've gotten you a scene in Twin Motion that is worth looking at, worth discovering. I know people really want to see these dynamic, powerful scenes like this. Well, guess what? I was up to the challenge. And the reason for this scene, well, basically, if you look at my YouTube tutorial se series, what I didn't realize that I was doing because I didn't know the term was I was using clickbait, which means I found really, really pretty images to put on the cover of my YouTube videos. And in particular, this part three importing high quality trees, people really wanted to see this particular tree put into a scene. So in this video, this video number nine, part nine of this series, we're in fact going to put that tree into a scene. And it's going to be pretty simple and it's going to move really fast. And at the end, we might be able to create an image such as this, which is direct from Twin Motion with no post editing in any other software. It's a product of Twin Motion. Isn't that fantastic? And to kind of illustrate the point is we're going to start from a brand new Twin Motion file, brand new scene. So here we go. Oops. Let's try that again. New scene, no save. There we go. So let's start and go ahead and delete this terrain out and we're gonna change that background right away. I wanna get into that location tab here. We're gonna get into that background, make sure that this background, maybe we'll put in, I don't know, a mountainous range. Hopefully we won't even see that. Then back in this localization, I really want this to be a late night thing, maybe a north offset, something like that. This is just gonna kind of, a, to establish everything. But then I'm going to get back into that settings and under lighting. I'm only going to pump this up, I don't know, something like 1.5 because I want to turn off my sun entirely. But I'm not going to do that just yet. So let's get back. Let's actually get into our vegetation contextual menus and we're going to drop in some landscape and have Twin Motion build us some terrain. Which, if you haven't used the terrain tools in Twin Motion, they're quite powerful. I oftentimes build my supporting terrain for a project with the Twin Motion landscape tools. So the first part about this is the underlying material here. If well, the context menu that we get is landscape, and then the sub menus are sculpt terrain and paint terrain. And if you click on paint terrain, which usually hangs up a little bit on my end. We get four material files that are allowed in our palette for our paint terrain contextual menu tools. And I like to start with something that's more of a dirt background. And the problem I have with Twin Motions Dirt is it just, it's, you see the tiling of that material. So I want to change that tiling. And a really quick and easy way of doing that is let's just drop a, a box into this scene. And then let's go ahead and paint that forest ground. I like this one. And then take a look at this. And then the last bit is we're gonna hit our color more section and increase the grunge and that's it. You see the grunge is just purlin noise that's added at a different tiling scale than the scale of the material file itself. So it just gives it a little bit more variation so that we're breaking up kind of that tiling aspect. And then we can just right click and add this to the user library. 
Now, it doesn't end there. The only way we can apply this back to our terrain model, let me go ahead and get rid of this boxes. I'm gonna select my terrain again and get into that paint ter terrain contextual map again. And this is gonna bring me up back to that nature section, which I wanna get back out of that, get into my user library and get that forest ground material. And I need to drag it and drop it down into my palette down here. And there we go. It just looks a little bit nicer. Not that much nicer, but enough to do that little bit of work to, to make that happen. The next thing is I've got some roadways saved in here, actually only one. Same kind of thing is I introduced some additional um, grunge and bump maps to that asphalt material. And then the last bit is I'm gonna get in here and get some grass. We'll take this grass five, replace the gravel section here. Which brings me to a very important part of this tutorial. And hopefully we can teach you something when we're just recreating a scene here. But we know about dragging and dropping some of these elements like this, maybe even some rocks in here. And then being able to paint this across our terrain, right? And then you should also know that you can go in and select in individual aspects of this and change any number of things like the density of those rocks as they appear here. Maybe we can change the size of those rocks. Any number of different things. We can change the season or density of a particular tree. Change it to winter. If it's a deciduous tree, it's going to pull those leaves right off of there. And there we go. And we can see over here we've got painted vegetation. Now something to note in my user library. I'm going to delete this item here. I want to add this to my library and watch what happens. We're going to go ahead and delete this out of the scene graph, which twin motion, please stop doing this. Every time I select something in my scene graph, it shouldn't change this sidebar over here. I want to leave it right where I was before. I want it back in my user library. So here we go. Here's a painted vegetation. You see when I click on this, I don't even need to drag it into the scene. I can just click on it. And then once I bring my mouse cursor over here, hover over the main scene, you can see the gizmo appears and that terrain shows up exactly as we had it drawn before. Now that's something really important to note because as I click this and add it to the scene, you see it showed up in our scene graph. I can now use this and paint the rest of the scene, right? Well, if we saved it in this current state, you can imagine it's going to save it exactly how it is here, which it's going to make a much larger file. That, that twin motion file that it creates is going to be larger in size. So it's nice to be able to truncate this down to the small amount that we had there and then save it to the user library because it can be really cumbersome to bring this in when you've saved it and it's spanning across all of this. But something that's powerful about this is I can go ahead and delete all of this. And because it remains in my scene graph, I can paint it at any time, anywhere I want to. Which is really important to note, which brings us to, I've actually already built this scene in Twinmotion before. That's this scene right here. And isn't that fantastic? It's the same scene that was used to create this image, which is a really powerful image from Twinmotion. So I saved all that vegetation already which you guessed it, I get to drop it right back in here. So under tools and vegetation, I've got a couple things. We've got our patchy grass and I can just hover in, bring that in. I'm not worried about deleting anything yet. I'm actually gonna place all of my assets here that I need. I've got fall leaves. Those are now placed in the scene. Oh, we've got some trees. We're gonna bring those into the scene. Winter trees, that's in the scene. You can see here the scene was built from this side over here. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh, I think we even have something called fake bush. Let's see, fake bush, we do, ha. Oops, I clicked that landscape instead. There we go. So now that I have those in the scene, I'm gonna go ahead and delete them because I'm gonna redo these a little bit differently this time. I just wanna, it's not gonna apply quite the same. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and deleted that fake bush section. I'm gonna go ahead and erase this section of this long grass here. It's gonna take a second to do that. And we can go ahead and get rid of these leaves. And as you see, they all still remain in my scene graph, which is really important to note. So the next bit of this is I wanna go ahead and paint this roadway that we had in here. Kind of a walkway that was in the original scene. We're gonna make it Maybe we'll make it two meters wide and we're going to paint it right through here using that custom asphalt texture that I grabbed. There we go. And then we're going to sculpt this terrain. We're going to add a few things. Let's go back a level in the landscape to sculpt terrain and we're going to raise a little mound where that tree goes and we're also going to raise a little mound where that bush kind of was and then I'm going to create some depth in the foreground by kind of raising a section here maybe we'll drop it back down using this smooth here smooth tool we've got a raised section there let's go ahead and use this flatten tool to kind of bring that raised section further in so we make sure that we're covering it with our the way I want my camera set up and then we're going to lower a section over here just to get a little depth in here maybe a little valley going on and once we've got this lowered I might want to move these trees around a little bit more they seem to be very uniform right now you can see they're all the same height maybe we want to change some density change the age on some of these something like that there's the European mountain ash we'll grab a couple of these guys and make sure that they're aged appropriately and then <laughs> it's funny and then maybe we'll carve out a section here. And I wanna actually add a gray birch right to this mound right here. Might even add two. And I'm gonna make sure that the age is up much higher. And I'm gonna change that season from auto to winter to get those leaves to fall off. And hit my number five key, shift, move over, get an instance of this and maybe this first one we're even going to rotate a little bit like eight degrees there we go so next let's grab our fake bush let's go ahead and paint this much smaller than we got here let's make it like a three meter brush and we're going to paint our bushes on this section here and even if i take my contextual uh, painter here paint some grass just along the edge here and on top of this mound. And let's get our patchy grass. Make this a much larger paintbrush tool. Now the larger you go, the more processing power you're gonna need on your computer. If I pump this way, way up, it's gonna have a lot of lag as it generates all this grass at once as quickly as it can as you're making brush strokes through your terrain. So here we go, I'm gonna make sure that I've got this grass covering all this terrain really far back because what we're going to do is we're going to change the field of view on this so that we're really catching the whole back end of the scene and getting a lot of depth out of this shot so i'm going to go ahead and crank this up and this is going to slow my computer down as we're recording in 4k and also producing this grass And let's do the last part of this. We're gonna to get to that fallen leaves and paint this guy out. And we're gonna change this brush size back to something like two meters. And we're just gonna paint just the top of this hill. That's all I really wanna do. Now before we place that main tree, that's the star of the show here, let's put a couple of lights in here that I know I'm gonna need. And they're all gonna be omnidirectional lights. Now one of them is going to be way, way back. I'm going to hit the number three key so I move a little bit faster and place this light way back here because I want him to really, you know, kind of show the depth of this whole thing. So just place that. I want to make sure I select it in my scene graph so I've got a hold of it and bring it up to the point where I can see it down the line there. And then we're going to change the radius. It, Basically, it's affection radius, what it's actually going to interact with. So we've got one light in the background there. Now we're gonna 
copy it over, not instance it, because I want separate settings on this light. And I'm going to rename this guy. I'm going to rename this guy background light. This is all about keeping organized. Background light, we're going to go mid ground maybe. Mid ground light. And then we're going to make one more here for now. And this is going to be foreground light. You guessed it. We'll make a copy. Rename it foreground light. And then the last bit is we're actually going to make a tree light. Doesn't that sound nice? Oops, except for I didn't hit shift. Let's hit shift, move that over. And this is gonna be a copy. Tree light. Now that we have those lights, let's go ahead and set up our camera the way we want it. And you can see that the draw grass distance as we get close to the grass, it starts to draw that grass the way we want it to. And here's our mound. Let's go ahead and bring in that star of the show. And before we bring it in, let's explain how I did that. So let's go ahead and get over to Photoshop. And here we go. Here's that original image that was used as the cover art for part three. And all I did was take that image and then use a couple tools available in Photoshop, which um, something like the quick selection tool where we can select and mask out this tree and then once I had this tree cut out I pretty much applied it to a flat plane traced that plane around the tree in SketchUp and then brought it into twin motion and introduced a normal and bump map and here we go it's in my user library under clickbait there you go and that's as simple as that what a funny little thing we're gonna place it on this hillside but as I get close to it and walk around it, you can see what it is. It's just a flat plane. You can see the UV mapping on the back is even a little goofy. It's just the UV mapping on the front that we care about. So there we go. Now let's start setting up this scene and the lighting. So first up, let's get into my camera settings. I want to have a lot more depth of field going on for this shot. So what I want to do is I'm going to change this field of view drastically. We're going to change it to something like 35. And then go ahead and click in the scene and kind of adjust backwards. You can see here now the depth of everything really, really changed. And so now we're getting that kind of rolling hill, hill here in the foreground. The mid ground's got that tree with its hump. And the background starts to roll out as well. So already we're getting some dynamics in this in this shot. So let's get back to that contextual menu where we're touching on the camera. And the next thing I want to do is I want to get that depth of field. Now you see what it did. That's because we need to hit this more category so that we can target right up here my tree. There we go. Now you can see the foreground where that grass hillside is, is kind of blurry and so is the background. We've got that bokeh effect from that you might get from um, a low f-stop on your, on your, uh, on your, in your aperture changes in your, on your DSLR camera or something like that. So. The last bit is we're going to start adjusting our lighting. Now, like I said, ultimately, I want no sun intensity whatsoever. I'm going to rely on just those lighting tools. Those, um, the, ooh, where are our lights? There we go. Our background light, our foreground lights, our mid-ground lights. And so one of the things I want to do immediately is I want to turn shadows on. I'm going to turn haze on, and we're going to get some volumetric scattering or media introduced into here or what twin motion calls haze and i'm going to change its affection radius is what i'm going to call that and get that haze kind of pushed into all those trees and then we can start to move this light based on where we want these things to really show up so let's turn this haze back down a little bit and we can do that by going to that haze category and clicking on more and turning down the intensity into a level where we can just see those trees beyond but we really do get a sense of depth and also that gizmo starts showing up again twin motion just a note there should be no reason why we can not see a gizmo so haze should not affect the gizmo just a thought the next thing i want to do is i want to make sure that haze is coming you know uniformly throughout the scene so i could bring this over here and in fact i'm going to cancel because what I want to see is, can I do this just in the weather in my effects section, which is by turning up my smog in the air. 
already you can see it's really kind of making this scene a little bit more dynamic. It's nice to see a little break of light over here, so maybe I won't duplicate that background light just yet. Now we can start to mess around with foreground light. Let's see what we've got there. Something I do want to do is I also want to select all these lights and I'm going to turn their color temperature way up because that original image is very very blue so we're going to get into like the 7000s or so and that's going to show up a little bit later so let's see where that tree light is located that tree light is actually quite a bit beyond the tree so let's try to center him up and see if we can't get him to affect that tree directly let's get those shadows on and let's turn up that intensity and we're going to see exactly where this is located by what it's lighting up. Look at that. And as we get this just overhead, there we go. There's the star of our show. He's starting to show up here. There's that kind of shot that we want. So next thing is let's get that mid-ground light and let's get him more involved here. Get him down into, into the trenches, so to speak. Get him to light up this scene as well. So let's turn his intensity up until we start seeing some things. It's nice to kind of get this light appropriate for the image of this tree here. And we might even introduce some haze on him as well. Not so much though, not so much. There we go. So there's our mid-ground light. And we've got some good intensity there and we might even duplicate him over here. Let's do that. And then that background light. Let's mess around with him a little bit more. See what happens when we just move him around a little bit just to see what we can do with this scene. Crank that intensity up again. And with that haze, you really get kind of a Oops, a spotlight with that background light, which is nice. That's kind of the effect that we're looking for. Let's turn that haze up just a little bit more back there. And we might duplicate him one time. Copy and the reason for this is we're going to turn the haze off on this and that's going to make more of a powerful light there you can see it so now we're really getting that effect on that front tree right and we can kind of start messing around with exposure and light settings and maybe even the height of this particular light let's bring him down to affect that tree even a little bit more and look at that starting to get the scene that we want. So the last part of this is I want to get into some lighting effects which are built into Twin Motion under the camera setting here. Before I even go that far, let's crank this weather up just a little bit. I want a little bit of wetness on the ground, just enough to, yep, kind of catch that roadway, see those bump maps coming through. Gives us a little bit more texture, some depth, some intri some intrigue if you will. And then in our effects, is there anything in here that we want to take a look at? Not really. So let's get back into our settings, hit our camera up, and let's take a look at some of our visual effects available to us. Let's look into our color gradient, and I'm going to start cranking up the contrast a little bit and getting a little bit more dynamics in our rolling hillside here. I love this shot right there. Isn't that starting to look fantastic? And I want to turn my color saturation down just a little bit because you're going to see as we get into these filters, there's some pretty wild filters in here. And they greatly affect the scene like that one right there. Isn't that incredible? And to use the same filter that we used for that preview shot is going to be hip number nine. Let's see what it looks like this time. That is just a wild looking thing with a blue tree in the middle of this shot. You can see here the tree light is not quite placed the way it should be. I think I need to move that just a little bit. I really liked this colder one. That could be edited out to be more of a blue light, which reminds me we can even change. I'll 
look at that. I could sit here and click these buttons forever and pick which one you like. Colder's kind of interesting. Yeah. So let's stick with hip nine. It's kind of a crazy one. Let's just take a look at this and let's get back to that tree light there. And what I want to do is I want to move him just a little bit so that I'm really illuminating the top of that tree exactly how I want it to be. There, that's it. Here we're getting that real brightness, that pop. That tree just pops out of nowhere. And let's select that tree light again. I'm actually going to change the color temperature of this so we can get a little less blue on it and match the scene a little more appropriately. Something like that. So I'm just changing the color temperature of the tree light itself. Now that we've got this image, let me go ahead and create an image from this. And the last thing I want to do is hit this more right here and make sure that this format is going to be 4K because I really want this to pop. And we're going to pull away from this video recording so that I can export this, which is going to take just a couple minutes. Okay, so we've finished exporting. Let's take a look at this bad boy. Here it is, image number one. We're actually going to take this and let's just drop it into Photoshop just to do a quick couple edits, see what happens, but let's see it first off. Look at that. Isn't that a crazy image? Kind of a doomsday-esque cherry blossom tree <laughs> but really really quick and easy to do something like an auto tone might bring some more dynamics to that shot and we could of course adjust our levels or our curves and really kind of dial in this image what a cool thing as you can see we built this entirely in twin motion just using the tools available to us go ahead and you know replay this video remember being able to save these grass save these trees save these things to your libraries where you don't need to rebuild them every time and then i want you to stay tuned for that next video the next video we're going to go over templating we're going to go over templating and how to save things to your library in an efficient way and in a clear and concise way we'll just take a sample by looking into my bedroom section of beds here and you can see here all these thumbnail images there's no quick and easy way of creating these with an image editor because you need to unpack a tmi file which is very difficult but there is a way you can do this with a template scene and a few tips and tricks so stay tuned that's going to be in video number 10 and thank you again for watching this and as always please subscribe <laughs>